Hello everybody, welcome back to a new video. Sorry for the abrupt ending on the last one. We were just uh, not working at all at the farm on Saturday like I thought. So yeah, dad is hooking the haybine back up. We had to unhook it to grind feed uh, uh, Friday. So we're hooking it back up so that we can go out and mow some hay today. guys we got everything pretty well I ran most of the day on the mower and got most of our hay down except for just under 10 acres which uh, I could do one field probably tonight but I'm not going to I'm gonna come back in the morning and finish up but I got quite a bit done broke down right around lunch the uh, the hydraulic pump on that goes on the PTO on the tractor split apart and I lost all the oil in the mower and so the mower quit working so I had to come up here and dad helped me fix that and then we uh, had a broken knife we had to replace so I'm gonna come back in the morning and we'll get the rest of the hay done And all of the first cutting mowing has been completed. It is hot now. Today is not a cold day. Yesterday it was a lot cooler. This time it felt nice running on the 4020, but now it doesn't so much. I am going to go home though. It's a couple hours past lunchtime and I'm starving and very thirsty. And dad is tedding right now with the 4440. We have uh a friend of ours has been storing his John Deere 730 in the barn and he is letting us use it to rake so that is sitting on the rake ready to go but we're not going to be we I don't know it all depends I haven't seen the fields that I mowed yesterday they might be able to be raked tonight and baled in the morning or it's just better for him to rake in the morning and bale in the morning as well so we'll check it out later on but I'm going to go home and get something to eat here is a uh, morning of Wednesday. We just let the chickens out. They're all grazing. The goose is protecting. They have really mowed this area down. They are pretty much to the ground everywhere except a few spots that they're still working on. And then they got to till it. And then we'll start throwing wood chips in there and they'll start spreading the wood chips around to uh, keep the grass from coming back quite as hard next time because our chicken area needs to be mostly wood chips so that it doesn't start stinking. So today's agenda, we are going to be raking the hay and I think baling it probably this afternoon. But uh, we got to wait for the dew to uh, evaporate off. So we got quite a ways to go before I can actually do anything yet. So I'm just sitting here watching the chickens. I'm probably going to hold a bed behind me of lettuce that didn't come up and just a few little things around the garden. Okay, so I just decided I'd do a little walk around update for you guys for the garden. It's been a week, week and a half maybe, maybe more. I don't remember. But uh, yeah, so starting over here with the perennials, the goji berry, it just never came up. So I kind of gave up on that one, but the blueberries are here, raspberries, they're in there. They're just a little shaded out. And the rhubarb unfortunately got killed by that late frost, late frost that we had. And then the apple tree here. So, this one over here is the very first bed that we've planted. But here is the bed that we are going to be cutting this next week. I cut next Tuesday. No, she already so. saw the chickens. They're all relaxing. Which we have our potatoes, which are doing amazing. They're our about, carrots, they're still here, still jamming, so got a ways to go on them yet. And then our direct seeded lettuce, which didn't do as good as the transplanted yeah. stuff. So we have uh, our radish and potato bed. Oh, there's some potato flowers. 
So these are some radishes. Most of it is weeds now. I gotta go through and hoe this here soon. Over here, it was kind of overflow for lettuce when I transplanted. And then also our asparagus, which is way over the height of me right okay, now. Okay, we are over in the shop now, showing you guys what we're doing here. We had to replace this baler belt right here because it, there were areas where it was less than half of the belt actually there. So we got a new one in there. It looks like Uncle Billy already put it in or dad, somebody. And it's all the way through, so awesome. So that is almost ready to go. We got new pickup tines in the pickup down there so that it'll actually pick up ready the hay. To go. We have the 4960 in front of the shop. I have no idea why. Uh, it was just here when I got here this morning. We have a friend of ours tractor here for raking hay. Uh, he's been storing it in the barn for a little while and he's letting us rake hay with it. Check this out. I got a plan and I'm executing it. So, the bolts for the duels are already taken out on the 4960. All we gotta do is do a little independent braking action and the duels will fall off. We are bailing with the 4960. Shocker. Definitely overkill, but guys, a couple years ago, we ran the rake with the 4960. That was overkill. So, we got the 540 adapter because the 4960 it only came with a 1000 rpm pto which is that really like a bunch of little splines on the shaft instead of the 540 which is this one so we have this adapter on here now and so we basically just gotta knock the duels off real quick and back up to the baler get that hooked up the baler's control box is right there on the 40 on the 4020 we got to take that put it in the cab and we will be ready to roll with that the 4960 fueling up now that is ready to go the uh, dad is gonna actually unhook the 730 and put the 4020 on the rake we just have he says the hay fields that we're doing right now they all have like washouts and stuff in them and he doesn't want to tear something up like it. I don't know if you guys recognize this field but a little bit ago in this video there was a time lapse of me mowing it we mowed it yesterday and now we are here with the 4440 and we are going to tet it. Now a tetter, this is what a tetter looks like. And basically what you're doing is you run in the row of hay right down the middle here and it's flinging it out and spreading the row out so that it makes the windrow thinner and so that it'll dry faster. So what I have to do is I take this crank and I tilt it so that the tines are close to the ground in the front and high in the back so that it and that's what it looks like once all the hay is tetted now i just gotta put this thing back how i had it There. Set up for road travel. Back to the farm for the baler. Man, that looks weird. It's been probably two, three years since we've had the duels off of this tractor, and you take the duels off, and it just takes the mean factor, and it goes poof. It just looks so small and skinny. Anyway, I guess we better go bale now.
that is all the baling I am doing for the day. I got what's left of the field behind me, and then tomorrow there will be other fields ready. This is how we've been picking up our bales with this truck. Put the skid, use the skid loader, put the bales on the back, and then drive up to the farm and dump it. So guys, this is the end of the video. I am late for something, and I gotta get going really quick. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Like, comment, subscribe.